The first ever ban on lobster fishing in Long Island Sound has ended on Thursday, November 28th, allowing lobstermen to return to the waters after almost three months. Regulators assigned the closure in an effort to rebuild the population, their goal to decrease the annual catch by 10 percent. Lobster fishing in the Sound once held a dockside value of $29 million in New York alone. Today, however, lobstermen struggle to stay afloat. During the peak of lobster fishing in Long Island Sound, um, it, it was almost like having money in the bank. But in the fall of 1999, rising water temperatures, pesticides, and over 10 inches of rain from Hurricane Floyd created the perfect storm that wiped out more than 90 percent of the Long Island Sound lobster population. Over the weekend, Hurricane Floyd came through, and on Monday when we went out fishing, the traps were full of dead lobsters. Many factors have been cited for the die-off in 99. Some have been scientifically established, while others are simply speculation. The exact cause remains a mystery. Lobster fisherman Jimmy King of Mattatuck suggests the species was overfished. In my mind, the fishing pressure was one of the biggest impacts on, on this animal. In early September of 1999, a West Nile virus scare prompted New York and Connecticut to spray a combined 30 million pounds of insecticides. Though scientific research dismisses pesticides as the culprit, fishermen feel it had a major impact. The straw that broke the camel's back was the added chemicals. The coup de gras was when they started spraying for mosquitoes. The main chemical used in the spraying of pesticides is called malathion. It's known to be toxic to both fish and crustaceans. A five-year multi-state study in 1999 studied the sound and found that a parasite known as paramoeba was considered to be the cause of death to these lobsters. Yet it remained unclear whether other factors played a role in weakening the animal's immune system. Oceanographer Carl Safina offers yet another explanation, saying rising water temperature was responsible for the disaster. The die-off of lobsters in Long Island Sound is most likely caused by an increase in the average temperature to a level that lobsters really cannot survive at long term. In 2000, the U.S. Secretary of Commerce declared the die-off a result of a natural disaster, granting $13.9 million in federal aid. They were giving out money, so I got on the line with everybody else. Kim McCowan of Crustaceans at the Department of Environmental Conservation says the fall lobster closure dates were chosen to achieve a 10 percent reduction while having the smallest economical impact on the fishermen. They wanted to be able to have Labor Day open because uh, they have really good market for lobster on Labor Day. Fishermen, however, disagree, claiming the closure isn't preventing catches because during these dates there are no lobsters to be caught. We took their data and we said, look, in September and October, when we, would, we, we know we catch nothing, they, they claim that we caught something. We said, fine, there's our 10 percent reduction. We agree with you. Lobsters in the sound may be scarce, yet fish markets are seeing no shortage of the delectable bottom dweller. All of our lobsters are coming from Maine and Canada. The die-off forced 88 percent of lobstermen to leave the industry. Lack of certainty as to why the species hasn't made a comeback has left fishermen frustrated. I don't think many fishermen would have a problem with doing something if it's going to help and it's going to work. Nothing's worked so far. According to Safina, the DEC's effort to close the season is not a practical solution. Closing the season for a few more months or lowering the quotas is not going to end the problem. For Stony Brook University, I'm Chad Grenier.